Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be looking at a 2.5k MMR Ricky and this is a mid Ricky replay analysis he sent to me through Discord, which I thought I might as well make a video on. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be talking about spell execution, map movements, item builds, because I'm seeing something funky here. A second item battle fury. I don't know about that, <laughs> but nonetheless, let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below, I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, so moving into the mid game, we're going to be talking about minute 17 to about minute 30. This is an hour and 11 minute match. So no, I can't cover the whole thing. But yeah, let's watch the mid game. He's currently 3-1-8 and eight with 83 CS, which is a very, very good score for mid Ricky. And if we pull up the net worth, this game is super in their favor. It's 11k ahead. However, the game ends up going an hour and 11 minutes, so let's definitely focus on how he could have closed out this game within the next 13 minutes, because it's certainly possible, certainly possible, uh, with an 11k net worth lead. So, okay, 11 minutes in, rotating over to the Invoker. Okay, pretty good execution there, onto the CM. Okay, actually no problems with this. I even think diving the Legion here is okay. Alright, it's not bad. After that, I would clear the mid wave, push that in, and that's fine. Honestly, I think hunting Jug here immediately is totally okay. Usually, a lot of heroes would want to potentially take mid tower or even Roshan off this, but I, I think in your average pub, going for Roshan is the best option if everyone was on the same page. Let's actually look at this kill execution here, though. Okay, so definitely a little bit questionable. There's two things I would say here. Number one is I don't think you can actually solo kill him here. He actually seems somewhat tanky. Oh my god, he has no boots. What the hell? <laughs> uh, but I, I would have considered waiting for Dark Willow here. I definitely feel like Dark Willow is the tipping point. And so I, I wouldn't immediately go on this guy. Also, the defusal is extremely late here. And the smoke cloud is positioned. He was like here when you smoke clouded. And the smoke cloud is almost as if you were trying to smoke cloud yourself. The positioning of the smoke cloud makes very little sense here. So kind of poor usage on the smoke screen and definitely no defusal is a big problem here. That certainly could have been a kill. Um, so gonna have to dock some points for that one. Okay, after that, picking up bounty runes and heading back to mid lane is definitely the play I would make. There's no reason to jungle on Ricky. So, I mean, you can, but it's really bad. And you run top here. Uh, I mean, yeah, if this invoker stays around, you could kill him. The only thing I would say is I would probably, I guess in this bracket, I actually would go for the kill on invoker because I'm just going to, wow, they have a sentry war here. That's unfortunate. I would assume he's going to stick around. But at this level, guys, people kind of just fight your team. Like when you are going from zero to five K MMR, most of the time people just fight. Like even at eight, nine K MMR, the general instinct is to fight. And so the lower you go, the more the more fighting that happens on average, um, at least the more random fighting based on kind of nothing. What I would honestly do with that information, and this is something I've talked to a lot of people, is just stick around my team. Like I would just clear the mid wave. I wouldn't worry about chasing an invoker because if your team takes a fight here, you just can't TP in, right? There's no tower nearby. The tier one mid isn't horrible, but it's not that close. And so, yeah, you get scouted here immediately, but then I'm Right off this, I would want to see you tricks of the trade and then TP mid, right? Just because I wouldn't want you to get tornadoed by Invoker potentially, right? So I'd want to see the immediate TP mid. And the reason why is I actually, if this was really high MMR, I would potentially tell you to stay top. And the reason why is when the enemy team is 10k behind, they would probably split the map at the highest level. But at this level, they're just going to take a team fight because that's just what people do. So the Juggernaut goes in, here comes the Legion, here comes the Jug, and you not TPing immediately is really, really bad. Like, it almost seems like you don't know that this fight is happening. Now your team is killing them anyway, <laughs> which is certainly something, and then this just makes no sense. If you were gonna go mid, you should have went mid when the fight was happening. If you were gonna stay top, which is definitely the wrong play here, but if you were gonna stay top, then you should just continue to go top. They're already dead on three heroes, right? There's no reason to show up now, right? I, I would just consider I would just continue to push this out and finish my battle fury. I'll quickly talk about battle fury. I think there's never a reason to buy battle fury on Ricky. I think you should always buy an axe. It makes you way tankier and accomplishes a similar goal. 
Going Battle Fury on Ricky after Defusal is just asking to feed as well. It's not a defensive item, no HP, no dispel. Just, I don't know, it just doesn't, I don't really see what it does. It's not even good for killing people. It's like okay with Tricks of the Trade, but I feel like Ags is just always better. It's way better for skirmishing as well um, due to the HP that it gives you. This hero is quite burstable. Now from here, I definitely think I would, I know I'm repeating myself, but I would definitely look to call the Roche. You just have Ricky Bristle. Uh, you guys definitely could do it. So that would be the main play I'd make. But from there, you could honestly take this DD and walk into the jungle. Like I would just walk up here. And the reason why is a lot of fights are happening mid. So I would maybe guess there's a sentry mid, which there is. So I guess I can kind of see it, but you get the point. I would assume there's a sentry mid and I wouldn't necessarily walk there, right? I don't really love the fact that you just like run down mid because of course they're going to have it. I mean, not of course, but there's a really high odds. There's really high odds that they're just going to be mid. Does he get nuked out here? Okay, you're fine. Okay, rotating onto the jug is probably a kill. Nice. Okay, nice kill on the CM. It's good. I gotta be a little bit careful about chasing here. So this is something I don't love that I would be really careful about if I was you, which is anytime you commit for a kill you and you use tricks of the trade, you should generally kite out because once you use tricks of the trade, you're very vulnerable to dying. Like, yes, of course you have one more blank strike, but you run forward here. That can be okay if you really think the fight is over, which maybe you could argue is true here, but obviously like just be very, very careful when Tricks of the Trade is on cooldown, especially if all of your mobility is on cooldown. I'm glad at least Blink Strike also wasn't on cooldown, but okay, you guys cleaned up another fight. Somehow you're not gaining much of a net worth lead, which I guess you gain 1k net worth here, but okay. Pushing in mid. I would just stay mid, like I wouldn't leave. At this level, guys, I'm gonna keep it real. If you are playing a hunting hero, like, and I'll give some examples. Let's say you're playing Tiny, Another good example is Primal Beast, Tusk Mid, Pangolier. Ah, eh, Pangolier is pretty good at shoving waves and can't really solo kill people too easily. So he's not the best example, but Ricky is another good example. Like any of these heroes with a lot of solo kill potential that aren't that good at shoving out waves, or at least can just kill people off cooldown because they have no cooldowns. These no cooldown heroes, I, I actually wouldn't run to the side lanes when I'm stomping the game. And it's kind of for the same reason, as I said before, like I'm all for split pushing. You guys know that. I constantly try to stress in videos, like if you're playing a hard carry that wants to, you know, hit timings, you should push inside lanes and you should keep the map open. Like, I don't mind the fact that Bristle's top, it's a little bit weird, but you know, I guess he's completing his ags and it's fine. But on Ricky, if I'm snowballing and, and I'm playing in this game, I'm 100% staying mid. Now I wouldn't run behind the tier two like this. This is a bit crazy. And I wouldn't even look to take the tower. What I would do is I would, I would actually play around this ward because this hill is okay. As I said, you want a number one player on Roshan here. And number two, you have this nice ward in this area. So this is just a good opportunity to play this top side here. And yeah, playing down is, it's fine. But as I said, running running to uh, the bot wave is very risky because your team could get gone on mid. You're also sort of taking farm away from Sniper, which is just pointless because for instance, this Jug, he's just dead if you're here. You know what I mean? One Bramble, he's just dead with a smoke screen. And so if you're the kill threat, you don't want to show in side lanes unless you are really close to an item timing, which you're not right? You're, you're just farming 200 gold for nothing. Obviously, you could argue it's for my next item, but you get the point, right? You're completely giving up your, your threat on the map. This guy could potentially die if Ruby's in position. You could just kill this illusion. This jug is dead to Willow plus you, right? There's a lot of kill threat on the map. And now this guy's fine, right? Because you're not in position. So definitely would revamp my, my map movement here. I guess he dies anyway, but whatever. That's just because he's trash. <laughs> he definitely should have ran away, but I guess he didn't think you would come back or something? I don't, I don't know. But okay, going, oh, risky. Oh, sh okay. <laughs> I kind of feel like you're supposed to get frostbitten. I don't know if she got clipped by the smoke screen or something, but okay, easy jump onto the Arc Warden. Uh, a little bit slow there, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit slow. You should be able to finish off this kill. All right, taking a lot of the tower. I would have used my E here. This is definitely some bad execution. I don't really know why you don't E, but your full HP going into this Arc Warden kill. And then all of a sudden you're like no health because you get hit by a spark wraith, uh, a legion Q, just jump this guy and use your E to avoid taking this tower damage and avoid taking the nukes. Anytime you jump someone who's in the middle of the, the enemy team, you typically want to tricks of the trades. So you don't get hit by all the AOE nukes or auto attacks. They're going to be thrown towards you. And then after the E is ending, you typically are going to blink strike out. And that's, you know, a really good way to look at the execution. Well, this is really deep. I hope you don't get punished for this. Might be fine. Okay, Bristle's getting punished for it. <laughs> All right, I mean, hey, this is this is not the end of the world. You guys are definitely owning. I would TP base here. Nah, this is not good. So 
The reason why I would instantly TP base, even potentially over clearing these waves, is I'd want to be able to get- Okay, there's two options. You could also ship out of south. You want to be able to present kill threat. Like, I know I'm repeating what I said before, but there's layers to this, right? You are the kill threat hero. You want to be able to be on the map. Your presence is the threat. And so you either need to instantly TP base when you're 100 HP like that, so you can get back out as fast as you can, blink strike to the creep wave or whatever. Or you could ship out of south. I super don't like- you on 700 HP, yes, you have pretty good regen, but if a fight broke out right now, which it could, the entirety of the enemy team is up in your Rubik is sieging the tier two. <laughs> what a chad. A fight could break out. And even if it's not a fight, a skirmish, right? A pickoff could happen. And you could die because of this, right? Because your lack of HP. So I would I would definitely ship regen. Like for instance here, maybe you're gonna end up dying here. Perhaps you have the awareness to not go in. Okay, this is this is terrible. Uh, you totally should have ran there. I don't know why you didn't get frostbitten again, but this is... Eh, this fight's a little bit weird. It's a 3v5 at this point. Willow's kind of messing up too. Uh, I can't imagine this works. At this point, I would just leave. I, oh god! Ah! Oh no, okay. Yeah, well... Yeah, I mean, honestly, guys, I'm... Just a big point, a big thing for improving if you're trying to get to the next rank is just having the awareness of the numbers. Like his, who died right off the bat? The Rubik died right off the bat. And then Sniper got caught out of position and Bristleback is top. So it was effectively a 2v5 at the point he went in and he went in. So most players do this, by the way. And that's why I say people kind of just go in at this level, this like one to four KMMR level. Most of the time, people kind of just go in no matter what. It, it obviously gets better the higher you go. But um, yeah, that, that's one way to look at it. All right, so you clear the bot wave and then you're like showing under the tower, which, oh no, no, okay, you're okay here. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I hate saying Roche, but why don't guys Roche? Why does no one Roche, guys? <laughs> I, it is the freest Roche of your life. All right, Arc Gordon coming out of the base. I would not be comfortable showing on this mid wave. You are. That is insane considering they, I mean, they're showing now, but I, you did definitely did not see them when you were blink striking to that creep wave. And even if you did, I don't, I don't know if you recognize they were there, but okay. Fight breaks out, sniper jump, kind of worst case scenario, but it is what it is. Onto the Legion. That's fine. Clean her up. Nice. Okay. Gone on. I have a tricks to the trade here. Just to kite out. Very nice. Okay. Jug, Jug, what are you looking at? There's a juggernaut right behind you. Go on somewhat. You're actually quite strong right now. I don't know why you're not going in. I mean, this is that's fine. I think I would have, I think I would have prioritized the jug kill. I, I I definitely would have prioritized the jug kill. I mean, this guy is their hard carry. I think he just finished using spin. Like he has zero defensive options here, and you have two supports next to him. Like this guy has to die here. He's got to die. Hundred percent has to die here. So I definitely don't like the fact that you don't go on this juggernaut. I think this invoker is. Is this a support invoker? I don't know what he is, if he's support or not, but he is super poor. I would not, like, yes, Ricky is good at killing these heroes. And if if it's at the beginning of the fight and everyone has all their spells up and you can instantly kill the invoker and then get out, that's great. But it's like you had the option between killing any of these four heroes and you chose maybe the least valuable when this guy had no uh, defensive options up and his next tier bristle. Like a smoke screen right here is super value. You know what I mean? Like this solo kill, it's not bad. It's just not like that good because you don't get this big jug kill that was potentially there. AC trying to mid. This is a little bit risky, but could be okay. Uh, once again, I mean, this is fine. I, <laughs> this Axe Battle Fury, <laughs> it's kind of a meme. It does a lot of damage, but I definitely would buy the Axe first. That would be the only thing I really would push you to do. Yeah, Sieging Towers, this Ricky is not good. Not good. Not a tower siege hero. Like, guys, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the next two minutes and then I'm gonna end off the video because I really want you guys to end on this note on the on these points and then like go play a pub with some of these ideas in mind. When you are ahead, you don't have to siege. You can if your hero does so, especially when you have Aegis. Okay? If you are playing Ricky and you are the kill threat hero. And maybe you didn't know, right? So that's that's a big thing. You were playing rookie. You were the kill threat here. Do not show on the tower. You don't want them to feel comfortable showing top. They might anyway, but you don't want them to feel comfortable showing top if they're thinking about you. If they're showing mid, you know, from them showing mid, you can prevent them from showing mid, showing top, farming the jungle. You want them to be scared of you. And you certainly don't want them to jump you when you don't have a defensive item built. Not that he's that squishy here. He's actually quite tanky. But 
he's obviously sitting at 1400 HP. And if this is a closer match, let's say this is like a, like a 5k deficit, right? This would be even worse. And you might be like, oh, maybe he wouldn't make the play. Maybe he wouldn't. I don't know for sure. But honestly, there's a high likelihood he would, because most people do. I've watched so many players around this level. They kind of just hit the tower when they're snowballing, no matter what. And it's just bad, right? Like, ends up going down here, uh, and that's to only, nearly only a Legion commander. CM cleans up the kill, um, but yeah, it's just bad. And you might be like, oh, but they got a two for one. Yeah, because the enemy team sucks and didn't only TP'd in two heroes when they had a free kill on Ricky, and then potentially a good team fight. You know what I mean? Like. It's not, it's just bad. All right, and to end off the video, we're gonna watch one more bit of gameplay and then, uh, yeah, one more fight. So he's gonna clean up the bottom wave here. I definitely feel like when you have Ags, you should E the creep wave. It does not show you on the map, so it's very nice. I guess you were looking for the arc warding kill, but I would be doing one of two things here. e the creep wave, or more realistically, just solo killing this invoker. I don't really know what you're looking at here, to be honest, at all. I honestly don't know. Maybe you think he shadow bladed or blinked or something. I, I'm not sure, but that was a pretty free invoker kill. And okay, using tricks of the trade offensively is risky, but it's maybe all right. Jumping out of jug, also risky with no defensive option. Blink strike out, blink strike out. Okay. All right, we'll end the video there. <laughs> but basically, to sum this up, don't use your mobility this aggressively, right? He tricks of the traded to close the gap for the blink strike. That's honestly fine, right? That's fine. But then he has to be aware of the fact that if he commits his W, he can't go invis to avoid the Omni Slash because he's under towers and he has no option, right? So just got to be really aware of your, your mobility, guys. Typically, you want to be holding one unless it's going to finish off a major kill. Does that make sense? Like you don't want to just blink, blink, tricks, tricks, right? You don't want to blink, tricks, blink. You want to typically blink, tricks, blink out maybe or blink tricks walk away and then if someone's low blink in you know what i mean when the tricks is coming back up or your second blink strikes coming back up and that's going to make you a much better player but all right thank you so much to uh top g <laughs> i didn't realize that your name what the <laughs> is that a that's funny is that mr tate <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> all right thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next one and i'm out peace and that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.